Hello, hello, everyone. You might have seen me already yesterday. Uh, I was presenting Dazzle Rocks, but today I'm going to talk about how to succeed in your first interview. And uh, first, just a short word about myself. Oh, uh, skipping. Yeah, there we go. So first, just a, a couple of words about myself. So I've been uh, in various different types of HR roles in the games industry for around eight years, uh, both in big AAA studios and now uh, obviously at Dazzle Rocks, we're a growing startup. And uh, we've been growing our team over the past year quite a lot. We've actually doubled doubled our team uh, in the past year since I've joined uh, joined the company. So I've uh, done a lot of recruiting, lots of interviews. I think over my career, I've done uh, at least hundreds, if not thousands of, uh, of interviews. So I uh, have a lot of experience uh, on that side. And uh, yeah, when I'm not at work, I actually really uh, myself also love playing games. I'm really curious about game development in general. So uh, definitely uh, not your maybe typical HR lady in, in that sense. And uh, I also do a lot of knitting and baking as well. So uh, yeah, but let's get right to it since we only have about 20 minutes. So um, about your first interview, obviously getting to the first intro interview meaning that means that you need to get over the first hurdle, uh, the pre-screening phase, uh, when you're sending your CVs and uh, and uh, your portfolios to to recruiters uh, to be checked out before they pick pick anyone for interviews. So there are a couple of points here that I really wanted to bring up, uh, even though this doesn't really have uh, have anything to do with the actual interviews, which I'm going to get to later, but. Um, really getting through the pre-screening means that you have to be at the right, right place at the right time. Um, and that can be sometimes really, really difficult to know uh, because obviously uh, the people who are applying to companies and all that, you guys don't really know what's maybe happening on, uh, on, the, uh, on the other side. Uh, you might not know what kind of skills the company is actually looking for. Uh, you might not know when the right time is to to apply so it's really kind of shooting in the dark sometimes sending your cvs out there and that's why i really recommend uh sending open applications even though it might seem like it's tedious and you know you never hear back from companies but i'm actually a testament to uh the fact that open applications do really work because i actually got a job in the industry through an open application uh back in the day so it was just about the fact that I happen to be at the right place at the right time and I happen to get the job. And really do your research and, and tailor your applications to fit the position and the company that, that you're applying to. Um, we sometimes get these like mass emails where we can see in the, in the receiver box like a 20 and uh, that's definitely a no-no. <laughs> uh, so I really recommend tailoring uh, tailoring your CV and portfolio uh, also sometimes to actually fit uh, what the specific position that, that you're applying to. And then I really recommend uh, utilizing your network. Uh, I've actually also gotten most of my jobs in my career through my networks. So being able to attend events, um, I actually did volunteer work in the games industry uh, for two years before I actually got a real job in the industry. And that helped me to grow my network. And actually that network has helped me to get my current job uh, eight years later uh, at Dazzle Rocks. So uh, it really does work. And um, then, you know, growing or developing your skills in, in general, um, do you actually have the right skills for the industry? Are your skills something that the industry needs and is looking for in general? That's super important. And anticipating what are the needs of the future. It's not just about what the companies need right now. And then for all of the people who uh, have been sending lots of CVs to different places, never hearing anything back, being really, uh, really sad about those situations and kind of getting discouraged, please don't. I was in the same situation uh, in the beginning of my, my career. Uh, like I said, it took me two years to actually uh, get a job and I was sending applications to basically all of the big studios out there. And for me, it was even more difficult because I'm not a developer. Uh, so I was in even in the more niche area of expertise to get into the industry, but I'm still here. So 
What actually then happens when you get that magical invitation to the first interview? You're probably super, super excited and, and a little bit nervous and all that. Uh, so again, I recommend doing your research. What kind of an interview is it? Um, are you speaking with HR first uh, or is someone going to interview from a more technical perspective? So really kind of doing your research and kind of tailoring your preparation for that interview based on what who you're going to be talking to. And uh, then, um, you know, what the company is looking for. Um, there's a lot that you can read between the lines if you've actually applied to an open position. So, you know, finding out about the company culture, reading stories, um, you know, listening to podcasts uh, about the company. Uh, it's really, um, really important to do your background research about the company and really kind of think about what they're looking for specifically and how do you correspond with what they're looking for. And then prepare what you want to what you want to say uh, in the interview. What's your unique selling point? How do you bring that forward in the interview? How do you make sure that you say everything you want to uh, want to convey to to the people that you you have a chance to talk to in the company? And also empathizing with the recruiter or the the person who's interviewing you. Uh, what do you think they might want to hear from you? But also don't lie as well. Uh, so it's important to to stay stay like uh, authentic to yourself and, and to your skills and, and your abilities. So uh, really think about what the interviewer also might want to hear from you. And um, what do you also want to ask from the interviewer? Is there something that you're curious about in terms of the company? You know, maybe you're curious about what kind of benefits are there in this position or, you know, what the team is like. Who would I be working with if I get the position? Um, you know, what are the day-to-day -day, uh, or what does the day-to-day -day look like for this role? So really kind of thinking about what do you also want to know uh, about the company? And then last check, uh, obviously, please be on time. Uh, I know everyone is busy, so we need to be able to respect uh, respect everyone's time. Obviously, there are sometimes, you know, these kind of extraordinary situations and, and stuff happens and that's okay. And, and some people might be late, uh, late at times, but uh, if you can, please be on time. It does give off, uh, off a better, better impression, obviously. And then, especially for remote interviews in the time of COVID, um, Check that your equipment works beforehand. Um, if you already kind of know which software uh, the um, the company is going to use for the interviews, whether it's Zoom or Google Meet, maybe you can do a, do a check uh, even before the interview that that stuff works for you. And then relax. It's going to be fine. And then what happens when you actually do get to that interview? Um, there are sort of three key rules that I always uh, always say to people when they get into the interviews. And again, relax. Um, it's okay. Uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes interviews are really nerve wracking, uh, especially if you're doing an interview for, for a role that you're super, super interested in and you really want to get. And maybe it's your first interview ever for the industry. Uh, but let me tell you a little secret. Recruiters are also sometimes a bit nervous to go into the interviews. It's a bit weird, but I'm actually somewhat nervous whenever I, I do interview really anyone, uh, regardless of whether it's a more junior uh, person in the in the industry versus then uh, someone who's been in the industry, let's say, for 20 years. I still get some butterflies in my stomach before I go into those interview situations. So you can relax uh, in sort of thinking that maybe the recruiter is also a bit nervous as well. And then listen, don't just think about, um, you know, what you're going to say next, but really listen to what the uh, what the interviewers are trying to ask you, what they're trying to tell you. Uh, because, you know, recruiting, as, as I've written down here, recruiting is a two way street. Um, it's important, obviously, for the interviewers to find out information about you information about how you work, what you're interested in, what do you want to do in the future in terms of your career. But it's equally as important for you to find out whether this is the right role for you, whether this is the right company for you. Um, are you gonna, is the company gonna be somewhere where you want to stay in the long term? And then last but not least, I know it sounds really corny, but be yourself. Um, I think 
it's always better to uh, get a job in a company where you feel like you don't have to pretend to be something else that you're not. Obviously, in interviews, you're showcasing the best side of yourself. I think it's um, it's really important not to like act uh, act super differently from who you really are as well. So yeah, be yourself. I know it sounds corny, but it really uh, sings true. Then I'm going to tell you some uh, common pitfalls uh, about uh, different interviews that I, I've been in and uh, different candidates that I've talked to. And uh, these are really, really common, uh, uh, common all across the board and in different types of uh, types of settings that I've been in. Um, so do try to be like not super negative about yourself. Uh, try to sort of spin things in a more positive way. So one of the things that I wrote here is that, you know, saying I'm not that good at this versus actually saying that, hey, my experience in this is limited, but I'm really curious to know more. It gives off a completely different uh, different vibe and uh, makes you seem a bit more positive about yourself and, and makes you seem also a little bit more self-confident as well. And um, then um, don't be an arrogant know-it-all. Uh, I mean, obviously, you need to be able to show and and utilize your skills in the in the interviews that you're in but if you go into interviews being like i know everything about everything um it can sometimes seem like you come off a bit arrogant and you're not willing to also hear out anyone else's opinions especially even in the interview so um, that can sometimes come off uh come off a bit negative as well and then Avoid speaking ill of previous employers. I know some people, unfortunately, have some bad experiences with previous employers, but do avoid talking about them, uh, at least in specifics, because it can sometimes come off to recruiters seeming like mm, maybe it's not the not only the company that was at fault, but maybe there's something in you that made the situation sort of blow up, if you know what I mean. It's a bit of a tricky situation, but I generally do recommend avoiding speaking ill of previous employers, especially in interviews. And then sounding and behaving disinterested. Uh, if you don't have any questions, if you're kind of like, nah, you know, I'm, you know, I, this job might interest me, or you know, the role sounds sounds fine. It doesn't really come off like something that you would be super interested in doing. And, and um, it can sometimes showcase that your motivation isn't really there. And uh, it's okay to really ask questions as well. Uh, don't be afraid to do that. And then not being able to back up what you're saying is really bad. So if you're saying that, yeah, you're, you know, you're a great team lead and, and you know, these are the common uh, things that I think every leader, uh, leader should have in a team, but then you'd have no experience from actually leading teams at all, that looks pretty bad. So really kind of back up uh, with uh, examples of your real life as well. And then not being able to reflect on your past mistakes uh, is a huge red flag for me because it tells me as a recruiter that you don't have reflection skills to make sure that you're learning something from your mistakes and applying them uh, uh, those learnings in the future. And then sometimes um, we, you know, we all know everyone needs a job to survive and live, but being desperate and even aggressive towards recruiters is not going to get you a job. I've sometimes had candidates send me really angry messages after not getting chosen, uh, saying that, you know, your company is terrible and I just need a job and why didn't you just give this job to me and, and all that. And that's definitely not the right way to go about it. And then uh, after the interview, um, you know, you need to be able to reflect, how did I do? Uh, did I have the right skills? Am I the right culture fit? Is the, this role really for me? And if it's not, that's okay too. And then follow up. If you don't know what's gonna happen next, it's totally okay to ask the recruiters, hey, what are the next steps in the process? When can I expect to hear from you? And then be patient. 
you know, it's hard. We know uh, it would be really nice to know immediately after interviews whether you've got the job or not. But um, yeah, please also don't harass the company for an answer uh, because there might be some stuff going on in the uh, uh, in the backstage that you really might not know about. And I know that this is super frustrating, but there are, like I mentioned, a lot of these situations where you don't hear anything back from the company. And I recommend assuming that, unfortunately, you did not make it to the next round at that point. And we're not doing it for the fun of it, uh, to like ghost people just because we can. Uh, it's most often the fact that we lack the time to give the feedback to a lot of people. And sometimes, you know, a lot of smaller companies especially might not have uh, very good recruitment systems in place that enable them to automate uh, automate things such as you know, these messages after uh, after interviews and stuff like that. And I know it's really frustrating, but also bear with us. And uh, this is a question that I get a lot, like, why why can't you give me feedback about my, my application? Um, bear with us, we're super busy uh, usually, and unfortunately, we really don't have enough time to give everyone detailed feedback. And a lot of the times in most companies that I've been in, um, a lot of people who get into interviews do get feedback, but a lot of people who don't get through the first stage of pre-screening, it's just an, an impossible task to give people that feedback. And this is where it's really important for you to have the reflection skills to think, hmm, what can I do differently next time so that maybe I can nail that interview next time. And then some more secrets uh, from a recruiter's perspective. I get this sometimes uh, that there are candidates who send me a message saying like, I'm so freaking upset. Why didn't you choose me? I'm, I'm the perfect candidate. Like, wh why? Why? And uh, let me break it down to you. Uh, there are no perfect candidates. Every candidate is different. You know, some people might be at the top of the line on the spectrum, but no one is perfect. There are just people who have sometimes better skills than you. And unfortunately, not all of us can be Olympic gold medalists. Not all of us can be those best candidates who get that job. And that's okay. But unfortunately, the job market is also, for certain positions in the, in the games industry, really competitive. For example, there are a lot of juniors who are waiting to get into the industry and that market is very, very competitive. So you're competing against some of the best people. And sometimes, like I mentioned earlier, you don't necessarily know everything that's going on in the backstage. Um, maybe the company isn't, uh, isn't hiring you because maybe someone internally actually applied for the job and the company decided to actually train someone who's already working in the company to that position. So you might not necessarily know uh, know all of the situations why a company has chosen to not take you uh, take you for the next stage in the in the process. And then, is there something you really missed? Um, was there something that you weren't really able to read between the lines in terms of are you really a culture fit for? Um, do your skills really match what the company is looking for or not? And then, um, this is a question that I al also always like to pose to people that. Is it a good thing to get a job in a company and in a role that you're not a good fit for? And that can sometimes be a really hard thing to swallow uh, because, like I mentioned, you know, every one of us needs to make a living somehow. You know, it, unfortunately, the world revolves around money quite a lot. But on the other hand, sometimes it can actually be a good thing for you, you to not get a job that you're really not a good fit for. And then as a last thing, every interview is really a chance for you to learn something about yourself. It's really, really important to be able to have those reflection skills there. And then um, as a last thing in closing, uh, do your research, um, really look into the company that you're applying to, um, think about who is interviewing you, reflect and learn about yourself, and be mindful. 
Also, be empathetic to the people who are interviewing you. Be empathetic to the recruiters. You don't always know what's going on in the background. And for those people who are starting to get discouraged in their job search, you know, I, I found this unknown quote from somewhere that if you were able to believe in Santa Claus for like eight years, you can believe in yourself for like five minutes. So I'm a testament to how hard work can actually lead to getting hired in the industry. So you can do it too. Thanks so much. Uh